Please welcome Michael Field. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for raising the day, I would say. It's been a tired day. I attended a few breakout sessions and I was so inspired. And there's just so much that we all can exchange ideas on. So much for us to learn being here in this ICF conference this year. Thank you to Tessie, Julia, Captain, Dixon, and the entire team whom I've yet to get to know, but I would love to get to know from ICF. Amazing group of people who have provided me with an opportunity to share with you a two cents worth of what I have to share in regards to us tackling Gen Y. Now to bring all of you into perspective, the Gen Ys I'll be talking about, I would like to specifically focus on those who companies find hardest to handle. These are not the laziest, these are not the most mundane, but unfortunately these are the most advanced, the most updated Gen Y group of talent. Now what do I mean? Usually Gen Ys, when they realize that they are good, when they realize that they have a bigger value than what their employers are paying them, they tend to hop between their jobs, they tend to take up side projects, pursue their entrepreneurial dreams, even on a full employment. So today what I want to share with you is my working experience with the Gen Y, working with this particular group, the high achievers, the ones that are constantly in demand, the one who would most likely craft a mark or would have made a name for themselves in the industry, also dubbed as one of the hardest groups to tackle among employers. Again, I would like to share this will be a two cents work of thought. I would welcome expert opinions and discussions after this session. Now, first and foremost, as I mentioned, or mentioned by the MC, I wouldn't have been here today without coaches, without mentors who have guided me. So to give credit where credit, was due, uh, where credit is due, all of you, to a certain extent, did play a part in my upbringing to the role and the duties that you're doing right now as coaches. So please give yourself a huge round of applause for being here. Thank you. I have coaches in the consulting world, those who are experts in the development of HR, and they have actually opened up my eyes to be here today and to share with you my two cents worth of thought. So thank you again all for being here. Now, why am I here? As I mentioned again, I'm here to share with you an experience. But this experience would have been accumulated over the course of a few years back. To start with, I had the opportunity to venture to 22 countries. Well, if we take into account this year, 25 countries so far working with governments, NGOs, and multinational companies on developing and grooming young talent through humanitarian, environmental, and entrepreneurial projects. This opportunity came to me at lightning speed in the year 2011, when I had the opportunity to win a global competition based in the UK, out of 45,000 people from 168 countries. The UK ran an experiment to look for the world's first global ambassador and I'm proud to share for all of us here who are Malaysians, we won the top spot. <laughs> During that time, Malaysia was considered the underdog because out of 45,000, when we were shortlisted to 24 finalists and eventually only one person, one male, would win the award, we were also the youngest candidate and the only candidate left in the competition from the Asia region. Again, it shows. But one thing, when I was in that competition, participants and competitors alike asked me the same question. How do you keep yourself so positive every day? Because every day we had to face challenges like The Apprentice. Every day there was a new challenge, raising funds for charity, working with different employers, working with different entrepreneurs with different demands. And I just said, it's all because of the coaching and the inspiration I've gotten through those coaching. So amazing. From that experience, it has led me to play a consulting role in various agencies around the world, including the World Youth Parliament in Geneva, Switzerland, the Junior World Entrepreneurship Forum in France, and also I work closely with the Ministry of Higher Education, which is now the Ministry of Education here in Malaysia, supporting the development of young people. To give you all a little bit of background, I graduated with a degree in Marketing and International Business from New Zealand. It's a wake up call right there for a whole day's work. But what happened was I graduated from New Zealand 
and I pursued my studies further to Stanford University and later to INSEAD on two executive course programs, both on scholarship. It was then that I discovered it is my passion to develop young people, and which is why I'm here sharing with you today. I've had the opportunity to be trained by consulting firms like Deloitte, Boston Consulting Group during my university days, which I find presented both a pro and a con with me aspiring to be a trainer and a coach, because I tend to be a little bit more analytical, perhaps, as some people would say, ask too many questions. But I think these are all important traits, which I have a lot to learn from all of you here. Just to share with you a little bit more about myself. I'm currently a serial entrepreneur. I own several businesses in project management, in training, in online media, and also in online commerce. I'm advisor to several boards, several ministries, and also several global organizations. And it is my passion to work with coaches, to work with organizations that have the interest to empower young people to, and equip them with skills that would make them successful. <coughs> now, first, we're going to structure this sharing session by sharing with you four main best practices which I've personally encountered around the world. Again, this is a collection of my personal experience working with world leaders. These are all international talent which are, who are world class. They are well sought after in their respective countries to give speeches. They wouldn't worry of ever running out of options for a job. So how do we retain this talent? What do they want? Again, a personal recollection. First and foremost, best practice number one, a key takeaway. I had the opportunity to work with young people in Zimbabwe, but on a rather unusual project. We were involved in a project in the year 2011 to actually help rescue the lion population from dwindling in Zimbabwe, in the Africa region. It was during that time where I discovered something. I discovered that young people are full with potential. They want to unleash, they want to explore platforms provided to them by their employers, by their partners, by their associates, to test their skills. But unfortunately, perhaps, we are not looking at helping them or providing them with such opportunities for them to experiment or to unleash their potential. It's the same with the lions. Usually, when we talk about lions, it's a fearsome animal in the wild, but as I volunteered in this project, we were taught how to tame the lion. One tip I can share with you is never look in the lion's eyes, eye to eye. <laughs> One of the ways how humans can maintain dominance among the lions is that we are higher than them, we are taller than them. And for them in the animal kingdom, that is actually a, I would say, rank of order. <laughs> So when a female lion comes charging at you, don't run, I know it's pretty tough, stand your ground and yell out as loud as you can. But again, I have understood the lions because I was brought through the proper platform to work and understand them and finally preserve them. The same with young people as well. Now during this time when I traveled around the world working with lions, we had the chance to work with farmers in Australia as well, rescuing them from the Queensland flood in the year 2011. I had the opportunity to understand how can Gen X communicate and work better with Gen Y. Number one, it will be our Gen Xs allowing a two-way ideas exchange, opinions exchange between themselves and the Gen Y. Oftentimes, Gen X tend to have the, I would say, perception that we know more, and obviously we do know more for all of us here. But the Gen Y are always seeking for room to share their ideas. And perhaps sometimes we may not agree with them. We can always play an active listening ear, sharing with them our interests as well. We would also see that Gen Y tend to stay with companies when they feel appreciated, when they feel that their talents are recognized. Pretty much like my experience working with people from around the world in the year 2011. You would find the best talent volunteering with only a fraction of the pay that they can command in the industry because they are recognized, because they can see their ideas coming to fruition, because they can see their employers understanding their needs and giving them room to express those needs. A second case study, this is an interesting conference. For this conference, it was held in Switzerland, it was called One Young World, where I had the opportunity to give a speech to 2,000 people. But one thing that this conference would tell you, both generations need to think positively about each other. We shouldn't leave room for discriminatory perceptions or stereotypes. 
to occur in order for the gen x to understand the gen y and for the gen y to understand the gen x. Often than times, the gen y tend to think that the gen x are old and mundane and they're not updated. That is a killer thought right there, which I always encourage my youth friends and my peers to think otherwise. There's so much we can learn from those seniors of ours. And for the Gen X, sometimes they tend to find that these Gen Ys are party types. They hop jobs too many times. If you invest too much in their training, they'll leave you anyway. That is also a killer thought. It's best to entrust that trust to the Gen Y and to openly discuss with them. How can we both help each other to improve? Now, during this conference, I was giving a speech to 2,800 people, but notice this more senior members on stage. They were representing the world's largest corporations, from HSBC to Shell to Procter & Gamble. They were all gathered in this global conference to come to an agreement that they will part a certain percentage of their company funds to invest in youth projects initiated by their younger employees. And of course, after this conference, it was a major success. So much so that it was endorsed by President Bill Clinton. So multinational companies are investing funds for their younger employees to explore projects that will no doubt add value to the company, but empowering them with a platform where they can realize their potential, where they can realize their dream, where they feel appreciated. And for this case, as you can see, this platform served as a unique avenue where co-creation occurred. The Gen Ys, who are at the top of the talent, who are the top of the mind in their respective industries, work with captains of the industry to co-create solutions, to co-create projects, to co-create ideas, products, and services that will add value to the country. Now, the question I have for all of you is, if you are consulting your companies, are you creating a platform, or are you advocating for your employers to welcome ideas by the Gen Y? And when you welcome ideas, are they being shown that they will be appreciated or at least recognized? Takeaway number two. I had the opportunity to be involved with TEDx. I'm sure all of you have heard of TED Talks before. A global phenomenon spread across 100 countries. Currently, there are 105,000 video talks on their website, TED.com. I was fortunate enough to hold the license with my partners to organize the premier tech event here in Malaysia called TEDxKL. But during this time, we noticed something. When we were a startup, we didn't have enough budget to hire people who were very experienced, so we took a risk. We decided to engage youths from universities, most of them top of their class, top of their fields, to work with us. Now, one of the things that we noticed, most of these youths are not only engaged in a job or in an employer's offer for wage purposes only. They are engaged because they believe in a purpose. They are engaged because they know that they are being empowered to do something that will help them develop their own abilities, their own credentials, and add value to our society as whole. Well. Now for this youth, we believe that Gen Y leaders can grow in training opportunities, in platforms for them to grow, and the chance to be mentored. A few takeaway points right here. Sometimes companies tend to talk to us saying that they can never get their Gen Y straight. They can never get their Gen Y to work meeting their expectations. I think the question right now that we should ask ourselves is, they may have a point because some Gen Ys are in nature problematic, which is why they should go for proper coaching. <laughs> but for most Gen Ys, think about it. Perhaps the company now should ask, are they empowering them with opportunities to work on a project that they feel a belonging to? that they find a purpose. One of the things that we have personally done with our youth team, and, we, and remember, this group comes back to us every year to volunteer and want to produce a kick-ass event for all Malaysians. It is because we constantly review what are their takeaways by volunteering their time for this year's project. Some youths would come to you and say, I want certifications. We give them certifications, but we also remind them what are the skills, what are the experiences that they can learn by being involved in such projects? So think about it. Have you been asking the right question? <coughs> Have you been talking, reviewing with your young talents? What do they want and how can you align what you expect from them to what they want? To get a highly motivated workforce? 
and of course to discuss a co-created solution with them. Now the fourth best practices and example would be all the way from Stanford University in Google. This is the time when we believe Gen Y leaders want to be surrounded with positive people in a supportive environment. Most of the times when highly talented Gen Ys leave a company or an organization or a project is because they feel that they are no longer appreciated or when they feel that they could no longer add further value to the project or they're living in an intoxicated environment. When we were selected to attend the Stanford Crash Course on Entrepreneurship, 100 emerging young entrepreneurs below the age of 25 were invited. This was way back in the year 2010. And when we attended this conference, we noticed a few takeaways. Stanford encouraged healthy competition. They showcased what other of our peers, youth or young entrepreneurs themselves, were doing right. They encouraged a healthy, competitive environment so that all of us could learn what our peers were doing right and how we can further improve ourselves. No doubt there was competition. It was blatantly made very obvious to the students there that we were competitors to a certain degree with the business that we had launched. But at the same time, they encourage us to share what best practices that we have done. Now, on the second point, you would also notice a diversity of people who join conferences, especially the ones organized on global platforms such as this. You will notice that when you encourage collaboration from people or talents of different industries, different curriculum backgrounds, different ethnicity, different beliefs, you tend to get solutions which are both creative, innovative, and at times mind-blowing too. This is how organizations like Google, previously, where we had the chance to visit their campus, encourage their employees to dedicate 20% of their time to develop their own products, to work with groups from other departments. And in the end, today, you enjoy things like Gmail. You enjoy things like Google, Google Talk or Gchat. These were all created through co-creation processes by their younger employees in these companies before. So, just wrapping up, I believe coaching is the way to go, and I believe employers, especially those in a managerial leadership position, will need to be coaches to a certain degree, to coach the understanding or the sharing of ideas or exchange of ideas between the Gen X and the Gen Y. Oftentimes, I think there are too many talks or too many sharing where the Gen X should listen to the Gen Y, but today I'm advocating right here both generations need to listen to each other. The Gen Y would want a platform so that they can experiment and express their ideas to further grow the company, to add value to themselves, and to ensure that they make their stakeholders happy. But for the Gen X, this is your opportunity to train up your next line of successes, your next line of talents that will actually create greater opportunities and greater value for your company. It's a give and take, it's a symbiotic relationship. And with this, I thank you and wish all of you the best in your coaching careers and in managing the Gen Y talent. A very diversified talent, but once understood, it can be your most valuable asset. Thank you. Thank you.